little Lambo pulling up on us. Oh, oh look at that. Lambo's taking a picture of a 1977 Skyline. You want it, what? You want the smoke? Hey, what's up guys? Javier from That Racing Channel. We have another special episode for you today. We are back with Trap Team, and this time we're checking out some really legendary old school JDM cars. You mentioned they have some old school Skylines and not the R32s, R33s, R34s. We're talking Skylines from the 1970s, which I believe is gonna be like the 2000 GT, uh, Hakoska comes to mind. All right guys, I cannot wait to see what they have in store for us. Let's check it out. Trap Team once again, Brett, my man. What is up? Welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks for having us. Check it out. It's always a pleasure, man. You guys always have the sickest stuff. So what do you, you what do you got for us today, brother? Thank you. I know you came here for some of the older classic Nissans we got over here. All right, so what we've got over here is the 1972 Nissan Skyline 2000 GTX. This one's a 1977 Nissan Skyline 2000 GTX. That one's referred to, this is the body style that they refer to as the Hakuska, and this one, the Kenmary. And that one being the first Nissan Skyline body style, and that one the second. Before that, there was a Prince Skyline, but that's Prince Motors, not Nissan, so we're just talking about these. They've been dressed up by the previous owner to look like the GTR, with the spoilers and the flares over the wheels, and of course the GTR emblems, we can put those on there. But. So this is basically like as close as you can get without it actually being a GTR, because I mean, from what, what we did a little bit of research, but it's there, you almost can't find a, a, an actual GTR in this condition, condition. If you do, it's like ridiculously expensive. Every now and then they do change hands, but finding one with such low production numbers and it's everybody's top collector, I mean, it's on the top of a lot of lists, so they are very expensive. Usually these ones, I think they're over 300,000. These ones closer to two. I might be wrong, they might be a little higher. I don't know, but they're definitely much more expensive than any of the GTXs or the GTs. These ones are both GTXs, which is the next model above the GT. It's got things like power windows, power locks. All the, all the luxuries of the 70s. Yeah, the luxuries of 1977. <laughs> I think that's, I think those are the details. There's a couple other ones that I'm learning about as well. I think we're all still learning about this. So let's, let's go let's through go each one. one. Let's start with this one here. Okay, so 2000 GT. GTX, so it's got the 2.0-liter L20 motor. It is an inline six-cylinder 2.0-liter motor by Nissan that is similar to the one that we got in the 240Zs, all the Z cars that we have here. Uh, this one's got triple Makuni carburetors on there. It might have a set of headers, I don't recall. Silicone lines. This one's pretty standard, pretty standard the way it came, I believe. Still so how much horsepower do these make? 100 something horsepower? I think these ones made about 130 horsepower is what was snapped on the little, you know, the identification tag. Well, that's not a lot of horsepower, obviously, not, not even close to today's standard, but these cars are not about the horsepower. It's about the sounds, the smells. When we started up, uh, you guys will see. This is, this is just all about the feels with these cars. Well, they were pretty quick at its time too. I mean, they're not the slowest things around. This here's, so cool. I mean, that's what I feel like it's like the infamous. When you see pictures of these cars, it's like the, the side view mirrors are just one of the coolest things about them. Japanese classic cars, I find that often on the side fenders. It's, it's really neat. I love not having it on the door. It gives it a really nice look. Plus, when you wash the car, and you can slam the door, you can close the door, and it doesn't trip out of the mirror. I know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. You dried it. Yeah. It's much easier. <laughs> that's my favorite part now, actually, now that I think about it. Sounds great. Uh, great exhaust. We should take a look at the exhaust. I don't know how much of it we can see, but it's got the really nice uh, 
twin pipes that go all the way the length of the header to the rear of the car. They match up in one muffler. I think this is the one. I hope this is the one. Yeah, the twin pipes from the header all the way to the back to the one muffler and out. This one's, it sounds amazing. Dude, this is awesome. I absolutely love, love this body style. It's, yeah. It's just so, it's such a nice looking car. I could just imagine people seeing these cars for the first time back in the 70s, that's that, that, that feeling, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's probably like when we first saw an R34 or something, you, you know, know like. When, when I'm driving this thing and I go past the glass and you see your reflection, it's, it's definitely the same thing. It's definitely just the shape, ooh, shape like the skyline. It's got the right lines. It hits the bumps in the road the same as the new skyline. Like it just takes it. It's really firm. It's a good secure vehicle. Mind if I go ahead and? Let's take a look at the interior. Yeah. yeah. Ah, there we go. Wow, that is just cool. So this is their version of AC seats when you sit down at, no. <laughs> Such a cool car with a cool history. I'm gonna go ahead and sit in it here. Oh wow, these seats are pretty tight. Yeah, small car, small seats. <laughs> Dude, this is so cool. Yeah, semi bucket, I guess. Just has that old school JDM smell in here, man. One day viewers will be able to give you smell of vision or so something here to give you guys the, the real deal. But man, there is nothing like the smell of just an old school JDM car that's been well maintained. They have that nostalgia. Here. Very, very cool car. So clean, man. This is. These originally awesome. would have come with a 50 liter tank. This is the 100 liter tank upgrade, same as the ones that the GTRs came with. So you got some pretty good range with it. I love, absolutely love these wheels. 15 inch Watanabe's. Yeah, they're great. They look perfect on the car. When we pull these things out, we'll give you just a complete walk around. Uh, Cause this, I mean, it's a little tight space here. It doesn't do it any justice. So we'll give you guys uh, some better shots here shortly. I'm a GTR fanboy. This is just pure dreams right here. So we got the grandchildren. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got grandpa. <laughs> All right, so now give us the walk around of the 77 here. Cool, here's 1977 two, Nissan Skyline 2000 GTX. It has, I think this one's upgraded with a 2.8 liter engine. They put the 2.8 short block on there. Same as the other one, the L-Series motor, six-cylinder. This one's also got the Makuni triple carburetors. It's got a different little you know, heat shielding kit for the trumpets. This one's actually got power steering. The other one doesn't. 14-inch SSR mesh wheels. Give it a really cool look. Check out the camber that's over in the back. That's, we'll get a better Dude, shot. this thing is, let me give him a wider shot of this. Oh, yeah. Such a cool car. Oh, man, so yeah, real different than the, than the 72. Yeah, much larger, much different dashboard. It feels like a lot more room in here. Yeah, definitely feels the same way. I'll roll down these windows for you later, but it's really nice. These windows go down in the rear and there's Old no school shifter. Color, so it makes it really nice and airy in here. And the ceiling's got some warnings. Oh, what is this, Suntory whiskey? I'm down for that, bro. <laughs> so we got brake fluid, low fuel, door lock. Dope, oh, we got some wood trim right here, what? This one feels a little more classy on the inside. Got this 2000 GTX badge. Man, what an awesome piece of history this thing is. Hard not to look cool driving this thing. Oh, I feel cool driving this thing. 
especially with the bee pillars gone and all, you know? Oh yeah, it's, a, really it's cool. so sick. You can see here. Whoop, whoop. Is that a Supra? Oh, wow. Is that an old school Japanese road flare? Yes, it is. <laughs> Those are actually battery powered. They're, uh, it's like a flashlight, actually. Oh. Everybody, everybody stares this thing down when you're driving by. Definitely a unique looking car. It is it, yeah. wild. We were driving earlier and we were taking some roller shots and two people about locked up their brakes. Try oh, to yeah. take, <laughs> try to take probably a selfie with it or who, go, who knows, God knows what they're doing. But they about locked up their brakes and wrecked into each other and proceeded to speed and catch up to us and tell us how awesome the car was. Yeah. Scared me a little bit. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> I gotta say, man, I'm really feeling this car. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's uh, definitely a Sunday cruiser. It's very comfortable. It's not. It's not as uh, as aggressive as it seems. You know, it's very drivable. These things are probably not too common here in the states, huh? No, they're not very common at all. I mean, you know, some guys have them here and there. They are available, but far and few in between, especially in decent shape. I was thinking, I'm like, man, I'm gonna go home, hit Craigslist, look for one of these, but it ain't happening. Oh no, it's not gonna happen, you know. And there, there's multiple models of this uh, particular chassis that have short nose and long nose cars. The short nose cars can be had for a lot less, but they're not as desirable. They do look quite quite different. Just got Brandon on the rollers. I've been in everything under the sun you can imagine. And these things get more looks than any Lambo, than any, I mean, you name it. And we drive a lot of cool cars, so one thing I do find with this is when you go to the gas station, people find it to be a lot more approachable. So they'll come up to you and talk to you about it, and the kids always smile and want to ask you questions about it. So it's a really friendly car. People see it and they just, they just love it. Ready to dig, race? TRC approved. You're gonna get a huge TRC approved stand for that. <laughs> he had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> well, My man, it. that was awesome. Hey, he yeah, caught you on the tree, bro. Oh, he caught you on the tree. Nah, he did. <laughs> that was the best race I've been in all year. A little Lambo pulling up on us. A little Lambo action. Lambo pulled up on us, sweating it. He's like, man, I wish I had one of these. Yeah, he's got a Rolex hat on. <laughs> oh. oh, look at that. Lambo's taking a picture of a 1977 Skyline. Gotta love it. What do we got here? We got a bunch of switches. You know, I'm gonna be honest and say I don't know what any of these do. <laughs> oh, shit. washer fluid. Here oh, we there we go. We got some washer fluid here. What do you think RD does? I don't know, bro. Maybe ejecto <laughs> I go Ejecto-cedo. Flying flying <laughs> Gotta love it. Flat belt only. One thing I will say, we've been putting these things to the test. We've been driving around everywhere and these things have not skipped a beat these things are rock solid it is so cool i mean granted yeah it's a factory car but it's from 1970. Damn, yeah. <laughs> so that just goes to show how well maintained these things were and i mean just the condition of these things i've seen maybe a handful of these things in the u.s and these are probably one of some of the cleanest we've seen here so it's it's i mean awesome awesome fine guys we really appreciate that definitely yeah the simplicity of the car and we just the, how mechanically simple it is it makes it fairly reliable so long as you maintain it so this car was maintained and they took care of it very well and it shows so tell us a little bit about this uh this the white car here it's a 77 right so, it's a so 70 we're in the 72 that's a 77 yeah so that would be the the second gen you know uh, i guess people can refer to as skyline um that one there has a motor swap done to it normally they would come with a two liter just like this l20 that one there has an l28 so it's a 2.8 liter uh likely to have a 280z and, so 2.8 uh, liter, six cylinder. Six cylinder, yeah. So that one makes a little bit more power. That one there probably makes closer to 150 horsepower. It's not much of a difference in the liter size, but you know, 40 horsepower, 30 horsepower is a lot. Oh Big man, especially now. with such a light car.
quick car hop. Now we're in the 1977 GTX. It's a it's a 2000 GT. 2000 Ken, GTX. GTX. Okay. Right. 2000 GTX. Ken Mary. I'm still learning all this stuff because up until like a few weeks ago, I hadn't really researched much about these to be honest, and I'm glad I did because they are freaking awesome. There's a lot of different models. The, the GT model is the one with no power windows or power amenities, like you can see up here. We got the electric door lock. Oh, fuel, nice. Uh, power windows and stuff like that. <laughs> so this is the lunch, luxury model right here. The GT is just you know crank windows, stuff like that. I kind sure. of prefer the GT. This one has a lot more space than uh, the Hako. Just riding in the, than the Hako. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This car is much more spacious. It's a bigger car. It doesn't feel like it gets bullied as much on the road. Whereas the Hako, even though it looks a little bit more aggressive, it, I feel like it gets bullied a little bit more on the road. Sure. It's actually a small car. Whereas I feel like the Canary is like a normal sized car almost because it's was big for back then. But yeah, this one has power steering. It's a lot smoother to drive. I can't quite put my finger on it. Why I like, I prefer driving the Canary than I do the Hako. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's the size of it. That one's also an L20. And that car, this is an L28. Uh, this one is a little bit more peppy. Sure. You know, it does move a little bit easier. Yeah, so it makes a little more more power. This is the uh, the two eight, right? Yeah. Okay, so that one has a two zero. Yeah. Six cylinder. They're both six cylinders. That's a two zero. Right. This is a two eight. Single, single cam, whereas the GTR variants come with a dual cam. Oh, okay. It's a S twenty in the GTRs. It's dual cam, dual overhead cam. And those are quite a bit more rare. Quite a bit more rare. Quite a bit more money. Well, for the Hako, for example, they're easily double what a non GTR would go for. For the Kin Mary. There was only like 147 GTRs made, or 146 or something. The GTRs and the Kid Marys are typically like 400 grand. Wow. Like, That's at wild. The, at the moment, they, right. they weren't that much like that long ago. You could get them for 200 plus, but now they're trading That's hands. still a pretty penny. 400 <laughs> of them. Well, again, yeah, there's only 147 GTRs with the Kid Mary. But interestingly enough, the Kid Mary GTR is also the only GTR that never really raced or competed in any kind of racing. Whereas, you know, all the other Skyline models kind of have their own signature race classes that they're all famous for, you know. So while I like the look of the Hako a little better, they're both beautiful, like just gorgeous lines and really awesome cars. I like the way that one looks a little more. I like the way this one rides better. Exactly, that's, how, that's kind of how I feel also. Although these are growing on me even with the looks. I don't know, something about the Kid Mary just got me. They drive really nice. Cool Dude, I was telling, I was telling Josh, I'm like, man, you just look super cool driving this thing. Oh, you want what? You want the smoke? <laughs> Daddy, Daddy's coming because that Supra. Smokes the tires off the line. It's so awesome. When we first got the other one that's at the warehouse, um, I was driving around the beach in it, and there's some girl that got in the turning lane. You know, it's a common move over here to get in the turning lane to skip everyone. There's some girl on a BMW, and I, it just, I wasn't having it, so I just left the tires up on her. <laughs> I beat her off the light, but blew the radiator. <laughs> it was worth it. It was worth it. I wasn't gonna let her have it. So we got the old school AC controls here. Yeah. speakers bumping back there. What's up? We got the aux cable. Dang, look at that. And I just gotta say it, my experience right now with these old school Skylines gets a huge TRC approved stamp. I mean, without a doubt, these cool. things are so cool, so much yeah. fun. It's not about the horsepower and how fast these things are by any means, but just the feeling, the visceral feeling of driving these things, the smells, the sounds, just all, everything about these things. It's such a fun driving experience, period. And then it's really awesome how much attention they get too. You, you can't beat that. Look, look at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy's oh, filming yeah. Josh. Uh, thank you so much, dude. I can't, I can't thank you guys enough. You guys always show us the best time when it comes to JDM cars. Thank you guys it is so awesome. All right, guys, it's been an absolute blast hanging with Trap Team. We will see you guys next time.